Over the last two years, there has been a monumental shift in a global attitude towards being green. It's really quite hard to picture just how big and quickly this change has come about. It seems like almost overnight, the social norms and attitudes of billions of people have pivoted to demand a greener, more sustainable future. With governments around the world making some of the most radical commitments since the end of the Cold War. But to achieve all these things, there needs to be a fundamental change in the way that we deploy capital. Away from harmful, pollutant companies towards companies that are actually going to make a difference and are going to help us achieve these goals. Which has led to the unstoppable rise of sustainable investing and ESG funds. Funds that invest for good, but at the same time promise higher returns. And as a result, billions of dollars have been flowing into these funds over the last few years. And for now, it looks like it's working. As you can see here, Vanguard's US ESG fund has been significantly outperforming its vanilla counterpart. So is this the future of investing or is this all too good to be true? Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James and this is the place where you can learn everything that you need to know to make better financial decisions. In this modern world of index investing, it's very easy to forget what you're actually investing in. You are investing in thousands of different companies from all around the world, some of which are doing good things and some of which are not. In fact, companies have a very bad history of putting profits before ethics. And the hard truth is that your money has probably been behind more corporate scandals than you'd like to admit. But at the same time, we need to invest. We need returns so we can live our lives and achieve our goals in the future. But at the same time, we don't have the skills or time on our hands to go around vetting all these different companies, which has led to the rise of sustainable investing and ESG funds. Funds that invest in profitable companies, but they also consider the environmental and social impacts of these businesses. But the question that we're going to try and answer today is just how ethical are these funds? And are they actually likely to produce you a good return? Before we jump into these two extremely contentious issues, let's just start out with the basics. ESG strategies fall under the sustainable investing umbrella, which also includes things like impact and socially responsible investing. Impact investing typically involves investing in small projects or private companies, specifically because you want to further the cause of that company. Examples of this would include a lot of the investing that Bill Gates does. He invests in a lot of companies that are looking to do social good. So he invests in a lot of business that are trying to tackle malaria problems in Africa. He also invests in businesses that are trying to further nuclear technology, like one of his own companies, Terra Power. These investments are typically high risk and rarely produce a positive return. But return is really not the primary factor with impact investing. Impact investing allows investors to actually invest in projects that are close to their hearts and ones that align with their values. On the other hand, socially responsible investing starts with a broad index, something like the S&P 500. And it then looks to screen out certain companies that don't fit its desired criteria. This could be a positive screen, like if they were only looking to invest in companies that had net zero carbon emissions, or it could be a negative screen where they're looking to exclude companies that fit certain criteria, like this could be fossil fuel companies. This type of investing will give you more reliable returns than impact investing. But by specifically choosing to exclude a part of the market just because you don't like it, you need to accept that you are probably going to get lower risk adjusted returns than a more diversified portfolio that includes all of these different sectors. Now that is something that SRI investors just need to be comfortable with. But again, with SRI, Investing for return is not necessarily the primary goal. However, ESG investing's primary goal is to create a greater financial return. And the proponents of this strategy suggest that if you can specifically invest in companies that are good at managing their environmental, social and governance risks, then these companies should produce a higher return in the wider market. So from an environmental standpoint, we're looking for companies that are better positioned to manage risks like climate change and environmental disasters to avoid things like the BP oil spill happening. Social risks are diverse and numerous, but they tend to relate to a company's employees, customers, and the communities in which 
they work. And if a company invests heavily in its staff, in staff training, it promotes a healthy work-life balance and it's very considerate of the impacts that it has on its wider environment, social environments, we would expect that those companies would outperform compared with companies that don't really consider these risks or don't manage them very well. Whilst governance relates to things like the diversity of the leadership team, the principles that they have and the way that they make decisions. So ESG analysts look at all these different companies and they score them against these criteria, giving each company an overall ESG rating. But different ESG funds will use these scores in different ways. Some funds will only invest in companies that have high ESG ratings, whereas others will invest in everything, but they will weight their portfolios more heavily to companies that have high ESG ratings. Whilst more active managers use ESG as a final overlay once they have already done their usual financial analysis. But this is where things start to get confusing. Because companies with high ESG ratings are not necessarily companies that you would normally associate with being sustainable. ESG investing is about identifying companies that are good at managing risks and as a result are likely to achieve better operational and financial performance. It's not about whether these companies are actually working to make the world a better place. As an example, lots of fossil fuel companies actually score relatively well on ESG ratings. Yes, they do pretty poorly on the environmental part, but they also invest very heavily in their people, in their communities, and they're also at the same time one of the biggest investors in renewable energy. And if we look at the holdings of BlackRock's leading US ESG fund, you will find energy companies like Chevron and Occidental Petroleum, drug companies like Johnson & Johnson, banks, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, fast food companies, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, and of course, all of the big technology companies. And obviously it depends on what you think about those. And to make things even worse, since ESG investing has become popular, the ESG rating that a company gets can dramatically affect its share price. So there's now a very real risk that a lot of these companies will be going out and greenwashing, ultimately pandering to these rating agencies and doing whatever they can to meet their criteria without potentially making actually realistic long-term changes. So it's really important that you do not mistake pure ESG funds for funds that do not invest in these potentially unsustainable industries. They're not like SRI funds that will blanketly screen out these bad industries. Although there are some funds that will try and do a little bit of both, like Vanguard's ESG funds that will firstly exclude certain industries. So they'll exclude things like fossil fuels and gambling and tobacco companies. And then with the rest of the market, they will weight their portfolios according to ESG ratings. But the reality is that you're always going to struggle to find a fund that exactly matches your values. And that's simply because it's very subjective. We all have very different ideas and understandings of what sustainable actually means. Now, a prime example is Bill Gates and him investing in nuclear technology. A lot of people would think that that's a bad thing, but for him, he thinks that that is the future and that's going to make a big difference towards the globe getting to a net zero position. At the same time, another very controversial area is big technology companies where you've got things like Facebook, Instagram and all the potential harm that that is causing. But again, these companies rank very highly for ESG. But this is not what true ESG investing is about. It's not about investing in a company because people think it is either good or bad. It's about finding companies that are good at managing these specific risks. And the theory is that these ESG risks and the way that companies manage them could work in a very similar way to the other risk factors that were originally identified by Eugene Farmer and Kenneth French, who showed that over the long term, smaller companies tend to outperform larger companies and cheaper value stocks tend to outperform more expensive growth stocks, and that if you tilt your portfolio towards these specific risk factors like ESG risk factors, you would expect your portfolio to outperform the general market over the long term. But is any of this true? And can ESG investing actually get you better returns? Well, there have actually been hundreds of studies that have shown that high ESG rated companies have outperformed recently. And their performance during the pandemic has thrown even more weight behind this argument, where as you can see here, Vanguard's US total market index fund has trailed behind their US ESG fund by over 20% this year. But this is the thing with investment management, and this is not something that Instagram traders will readily admit. 
It's great when you outperform, but unless you can explain exactly why you produce that outperformance, you may as well just call it luck. So yes, ESG funds have outperformed recently. And by recently, I mean over the last 10 years or so. But the reason for that outperformance is much more hotly contested. There are proponents of ESG that claim that this outperformance, or at least a significant part of this outperformance, is due to these companies actually managing these risk vectors more effectively. Whilst others would point towards the fact that ESG funds have only really started to outperform since they've started to really grow in popularity, and that these billions of dollars that are now flooding into these funds are starting to inflate the prices of high rated ESG stocks. Which is a really interesting point, because if you had two fundamentally identical companies that had the same future prospects, but one of these companies had a high ESG rating, we would expect that its price would be inflated simply because more and more people want to own ESG stocks. Whilst at the same time, the non-ESG companies' share price would be expected to decline. But this is the thing, if you've got two identical companies, fundamentally identical companies that are making the same amount of profit and are expected to make the same amount of profit in the future, but one of these companies is trading at a big discount to the other one, which one do you think is likely to outperform over the long term? Yes, ESG theory states that a highly rated ESG company should be in a better position to manage these risks and as a result should outperform. However, it's likely that the premium that is being placed on these companies has more than offset those benefits. So if all you care about is return, there is actually a very real strategy that involves specifically investing in non-ESG stocks because their valuations have been artificially deflated. And we would expect that over the long, long term, they would actually outperform. However, ESG investing is only likely to get more and more popular from this point. And we're going to see more and more and more money flowing into these funds. So the reality is that at least in the short term, we're going to see the premiums that are being paid for these companies increasing. And at the same time, the non-ESG companies are going to continue to see their share prices decline. And this trend could continue for many, many years. The other big argument against ESG outperformance is that ESG funds have simply ridden on the laurels of technology companies. As I'm sure you are aware, technology companies have done very well over the last year and over the last couple of years. And at the same time, technology companies tend to rate very highly on ESG metrics, which means that ESG funds are typically more weighted to growth companies and specifically technology companies than the wider market, which is probably one of the main reasons why they have outperformed. But to be brutally honest, I've spent the last few weeks researching ESG investing, reading countless papers, countless articles, and speaking to a lot of professionals in the industry. And the only thing that I am sure of is that there is very little consensus on any of this stuff. And this is largely due to the fact that modern ESG investing has only really been around for 10 years or so. And we really just don't have enough data to actually work out what is going on and where this performance can be attributed to. At the same time, there's a distinct lack of common definitions and terminology in the industry. And you've also got another big problem of a lot of funds going out and branding themselves as sustainable investing or ESG investing when they're really not. But let's bring this all back to what this all means to you as an investor. If all you care about is getting the best possible financial return, then ESG investing is actually a really interesting area. Now, even though it may turn out that there is no fundamental basis for these companies' outperformance, or maybe that outperformance is going to be attributed to other already known factors, the reality is that ESG investing is going to continue to grow in popularity, which means that these stocks are going to become more and more and more in demand, which may mean that they may continue to outperform for a very, very long period of time. On the other hand, if all you care about is investing sustainably and making sure that your money is doing good, then the reality is that you're going to find it very, very hard to find any fund that 100% matches with your values. So you're going to have to be pragmatic about this and you're going to have to go for the second best option which is ultimately trying to find a fund that excludes the majority of areas that you do not want to be investing in. In either scenario, you're going to have to do a hell of a lot more research than you typically would with investing in a normal index fund, which normally just does what it says on the tin. Each sustainable investing fund, whether that's an SRI fund or an ESG fund, is going to have its own methodology. So you're going to have to do some research and work out what that is and work out exactly what it owns. 
Now, this has been a really high level introduction to sustainable investing and ESG investing. But if you guys want to see me do some more in-depth analysis of specific ESG funds, then let me know down in the comments. At the end of the day, I think sustainable investing is a really interesting area. And although we're likely to see a lot of bumps in the road ahead, I do believe that as common definitions, regulation and financial science catches up, we should start to see more new ways of investing that allow us to generate good returns and at the same time keep a clear conscience.